Hey guys, good morning. So we're setting up our raised beds finally today. So this is the area that we've got all prepped and ready to go, but first I need to run and grab all of my supplies out in the barn. So all of my raised beds are in these boxes which I've had in here since early this spring. We thought we were gonna get to this project a lot sooner. I think that what I'm gonna do, I forgot how many boxes there actually are in here. I'm gonna go get the pickups and back it up to the barn so I can load them all up and take them there a lot easier. Looks like we have a bunch of stuff left in there from when we went camping this last weekend. So this is the wood we're gonna be using. It's all cedar. I have enough in here to make four three by four raised beds, four three by six, and four L shapes. So that'll be a six foot on each side, and then there'll be four, four three foot sections to kind of create an L. So I think it's gonna be a really neat look for the garden. I think it'll look kind of formal. That's what I'm kind of going for. Um, the fun thing about these boards is uh, we were sent these by Gardener Supply way early this spring. We were hoping to have this area prepped a long time ago. And it was just a much bigger project than we had anticipated. There was a lot going on right here. It's been fun though to see like every step, you know, cause everything kind of looks like chaos for a while. And then all of a sudden you kind of see light at the end of the tunnel when everything's looking cleaned up and like you can actually start like, putting things together. So this is an exciting day. Right here, this is how we're gonna be watering. Um, we had this whole area trenched up when we were running new lines, a new sprinkler line over here. So this is actually a dedicated drip zone just for the garden space. This will probably be buried in the end, but this is where we'll be teeing off to, you know, run water to all the beds. This came all the way from our house. So there was a great big trench across the driveway there, and then it came all the way down like this to that spot right there. We also had a faucet put in while we were at it. We thought, well, you know what? Even if we don't use it out here very much, at least we have running water, like access to it right here, which we, we've used it a couple times. I mean, you can see the hose. We've watered some arbs here and there, so it's been useful so far. So I know I want approximately three feet between each bed, maybe a little bit more if we end up with extra space. I don't have a real method on how I'm gonna measure this out. I kind of know approximately where center is. What I wanna do, I'm such a visual person. I have this all mapped out on paper, like uh, to the foot but it doesn't help me out. I have to get them assembled and then I can kind of shift them around. I'll kind of set them in the space where I think they're gonna go. And then I can do my measuring at that point and space them out accordingly. In the end, I would like to have a little picket fence around this whole area. So if I have extra space on either side, I would like to leave it open so that I could have the um, ability to add extra beds later if I want. So I do know on this side, this is the only solid side. I know that the fence line needs to be right on the outside of this because I want this to be on the interior of the garden. So this is definitely one side of the garden and we'll kind of work that way. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is just pull all the boards out and get them all assembled first. So sorry for that super long explanation. I just thought that this little area deserved a backstory. So now I'm gonna actually get into the construction of these. So instead of trying to put them all together out in the garden space where we had to kneel down constantly, we're gonna try to utilize the back of the truck to put together as much of them as we can and then we'll go set them out in the garden. Also, there's kind of a like a soft, smooth side of the board and then there's a rough side and I'm kind of facing all the rough sides in. I don't know if that's right. I don't think it really matters though. It's all cedar, right? Shouldn't matter what it feels like. They look really pretty though. I'm so excited. So we put together eight of the 12 raised beds that we were sent and they are super easy to put together. These brackets make it super easy. So the boards slide right in and then there's just screws. There's two on each side right there just to secure the boards and then there's this little plastic piece that you could pop into the corner just to make it look finished. So I mean it took us all of maybe 10 minutes or less to put together each one of these beds. So there's four three by six. There's two three by fours here and then I already have two three by fours sitting kind of in their spots out here. All right guys, so we got most of them set up. We have all eight of the exterior beds set. So the three by four, the three by sixes, and we started getting the interior beds set up, but I kind of misjudged how much time I actually had this morning. And I have a meeting that is about 30 minutes away. I have to go to this afternoon. So we're gonna pick this up tonight and show you the rest of the project. 
All right, we're back and we are starting to lose light. So we're not gonna actually be able to measure out like precisely where each one of these beds are gonna go, but we've got it laid out pretty much how we're gonna have it in the end. So on each of the far reaches of the garden are the three by four beds. Those kind of flank the outsides. And then we have the three by sixes in from that. And then in the center here, we have the L shapes. So they all came together really, really nicely. I mean, having those uh, hinges, like these are actually pivoting hinges. So these are a little bit different than the ones we showed you earlier because these ones will pivot um, outwards. So they'll go a 90 degree angle or anything bigger than that. So you can kind of create different shapes if you want to, but it made it really handy to create this type of shape right here. So what the plan is, is I want to do four foot walkways in the main aisle. So the main aisle, first main aisle will be right down the center here. So we'll have four feet, which I don't think I've got these four feet. Maybe I do. I don't know, I'm a terrible judge of distance. And then the other main aisle goes from side to side. So it's kind of like a cross that goes right through the center of the garden. And so those will be four foot walkways. And on either end, so on this end of the garden and on that end, there'll be a four foot, maybe a four to five foot arbor with roses and of course the picket fence. There's Dexter. The last few videos, he hasn't made an appearance because he's usually inside napping when we film. So, so he's kind of been making himself a little bit scarce. And then we're gonna have another opening right up front, of course. So right here, there'll be another opening about right here with another arbor with roses over it and then the picket fence. So there'll be three entrances, entrances, entrances. Three entrances to the garden, one right in the center two on the sides, picket fence around it, right in the center here. I'm gonna do something fun. I don't know what yet. It'll either be a really pretty pot, something a little higher, and that's the whole reason why I went with short raised beds, one of the reasons. Because I wanted to have whatever I chose for the centerpiece to really show up. So whether it's a fountain or a really pretty pot, I wanted the raised beds not to be so high that it detracted from that. And I also chose shorter ones because it's easier to kind of create really, really nice soil. Um, I tend to think, and maybe it's just me, um, getting the mix right in raised beds, but I grow things a lot better, just like almost straight in the ground. So when I have a shorter raised bed, I can fill it up with a good mix of things and I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do, but the roots will still reach, you know, the normal ground here and I can start working good stuff in. And I just, I don't know, I like that idea. These ones actually, these ones, <laughs> these brackets right here actually can stack. So there's a, another, like a stackable joint, I think is what it's called, to where you can stack up another one if you want. So I have the ability to make them higher if I want to in the future. So if I don't want to like bend down so far, I won't have to in the future. And the other thing I want to do in this space, in all of the walkways, I am in a landscape fabric because I don't want to spray or have weeds all over in my vegetable area. And we're gonna put pea gravel down. So that's gonna be the walkways. I tend to wanna do some kind of a, like a wood mulch kind of thing because I like the, how warm it looks. But pea gravel will be very tidy and clean and I think I want that because vegetable gardens tend to be a little bit, I mean, you guys know, vegetables like tomatoes and those kind of things, they get wild and kind of mangy sometimes. So I want everything else in here to look very precise and clean. Right around the centerpiece though, I probably won't landscape fabric right around in this middle because whatever I put right here, I'm thinking like some sweet romance lavender or something really pretty right around the base of it that'll bloom all summer or some annuals will be really, really pretty. So anyway, now you guys can see kind of the configuration of the beds. The next step is the um, sprinkler guys are coming back to reroute this, spring, this zone. So this zone, like I said, is dedicated for the vegetable garden. They are going to trench, one trench right along the backside of these beds and right along these beds right here. And we're gonna have individual faucets. So one in every corner of each raised bed. So I can have them all open and run them all at the same time or I will have the ability to shut one of the beds off if I'm growing something that doesn't need quite as much water or if I have a bed that doesn't have as much in it or nothing in it for a little while, I can shut that off and I won't be wasting any water. So we figured while the ground is bare and we have nothing down, it was a good time to just get that kind of thing done, get the infrastructure right so that we'll really enjoy it and it'll be really, really functional. 
So that's why we're not filling the beds yet. We're putting them kind of where we want them, so tomorrow we'll probably come out and put them precisely in their spots. We're gonna put a stake in each bed where we want the faucets. Sprinkler guys can come do their things and then we can kind of finish it up. So we will put links to all of the stuff we used, all of the um, kits to make these beds down in the comment or description section down below if you wanna go check them out. I would recommend if you are not like a builder type person or if you just want something easy, these are awesome. They're also made of all red cedar, so they're rot resistant. They'll last for many, many, many years. Uh, so I just feel like they're a good thing. I'm excited to have them in my garden space. So thank you Gardener Supply so much for sending these out and waiting for so long to see us even use them in a video. It's been months since you sent them. So thank you very, very much. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.